In this week's episode, we're going to go over three projects that you can do with a chainsaw to improve the wildlife habitat on your property. Mossy Oak Properties, where outdoorsmen find their favorite place. Well, as you can tell, it's cold, mm -hmm. it's damp, it's raining, and snowing. It's overall pretty gross outside. What is one way that we could get our blood pumping and wake up these woods this time of year? And in the process, improve wildlife habitat. Oh, hands down. One of our favorite things to do, other than maybe control burning, is that is start up some still chainsaws. That's right, nothing wakes up a sleepy wintertime woods like the scream of a chainsaw. And that's what we want to talk about in this week's video are three projects that mm -hmm. you can easily accomplish yourself with a chainsaw to improve the wildlife habitat on your property. We're going to talk about crop tree release, mm -hmm. when, where, and how to accomplish that. Wildlife openings, Eric's favorite motto, creating cover that equals food that you can Boom. easily do with the chainsaw. <laughs> and maybe my favorite, practice with a chainsaw and this time of year is invasive species control. Obsessive. All these things that are great to do this time of year. It's cold, it gets our blood pumping, it eats up that time until the spring turkey woods. And in the process, of course, we're improving the wildlife habitat mm -hmm. on our property, which is the name of the game. Yeah, there's no better tool out there than fire and running a chainsaw that can create cover to equals food, as Cody mentioned. I mean, just give wildlife a home and also those food, the value that it produces for those wildlife, all species. Yeah. That's the best thing about it. It's not just a deer and turkey type of thing or a rough grouse kind of thing. We're talking salamanders. We're talking bugs that we don't even know the name. Songbirds, butterflies. Yes, everything. Yeah. In a chainsaw this time of year, you know, we're kind of on the downside of hunting season. Yeah. You know, most of the Ohio goes till like June. <laughs> Anyway, so it's like forever. But no, this is the time, as Cody mentioned, you know, we're kind of in the dog days of, uh, oh, you know, gosh. it's tough to get motivated, especially on a day like today. But no matter where you're at, mm. we can get things done in this dormant season. See? Yeah, <laughs> you said it well. This, these are the dog days of winter. Mm -hmm. You know, the dog days of summer. The dog days of winter are the days are short, it's cold. But this time of year, as wildlife managers, this is when we can really have the greatest influence on wildlife and the habitat on our property. This is when we can make hay. This is when we get to get out, stretch our legs. Mm -hmm. And for both of us, yeah. one of our favorite tools is the chainsaw. And that's what we're going to discuss in this week's video. Now, when you go out there, you have to decide what you're trying to accomplish on your property. Now, am I more concerned about wildlife and not the, necessarily the financial aspect of things? Or am I more after the financial than the wildlife? Because that's going to determine the type of cut that you do around an oak tree. Now, let's just talk for this conversation. We're just gonna be doing, dealing with wildlife aspect of it. So we go out there, we find a tree, that's an oak tree. And usually this time of year, and most of the neck of the woods, especially the younger oaks, they will continue to have leaves on them and that helps you to identify. So basically it's sunlight management once again, letting the sunlight hit the forest floor. We have the eruption of food, but same thing, it goes to these trees. We're looking for energy, more food value for the tree. And what's best about this, this time of year is one of the only things in wildlife management where you kind of see that instant result. So when we release this, this oak tree this year, this here in a little bit, what happens is here this growing season, we will start to see a little bit more branching. We will see the results, um, and which is astonishing because everything else in wildlife management takes, you gotta be patient. So one of the practices when a chainsaw is that you do see kind of instant results of it. But looking around this, we have oaks spread out without. So one of the things that's uh, like, what tree do I cut? Now again, we're talking about the wildlife aspect of things. So when you cut all the way around an oak, what happens is sunlight does hit that tree and we do get more branching. More branching means more limbs, more limbs means not. So the value reference to the financial aspect of it is gonna be down. But again, we're talking wildlife value. So we're looking at trees and you have to play judge and jury when it comes to what trees am I going to cut around it to make this specific tree grow even better? So it is okay, and I know this is blasphemy in a lot of cases, it is okay to cut an oak tree down. And we have a lot of little uh, smaller oaks that do not have a canopy, do, or 
you know, they're already starting to grow out because they're fighting for the sun on this main oak tree right here, you know? So we have this oak tree right here. We have an oak tree here that's, it's growing out away from the main tree. So what, we'll, what we would do is we're looking for trees that's affecting this main tree, this main producer, and we're gonna release all the way around it. Now, if we're talking about the financial version of it, we would only cut a little bit around it, just enough, let a little bit more sunlight hit that tree. So basically you're playing judge and jury. It's simple as that. It's just cutting trees around the main tree so sunlight can hit it so it grows more, more acorns. And also, again, all wildlife species, we're talking about more leaves, more leaf litter. Yeah, so crop tree release, it's one of my favorite TSI mm. strategies this time of year. And everything Eric said is spot on and you accomplish a number of different things Watch. just cutting around one oak tree. More sunlight for that tree means more branches, which increases mass production for this oak species, but also cutting out around it, you're still letting a little bit of sunlight hit the forest floor, opening mm -hmm. the canopy. So you're gonna get some native grasses, native shrubs, native briars, you're gonna take the place of those trees that you cut as a result of that added sunlight. So oh, yeah. cutting down one tree, you're helping an individual tree, the tree that we are releasing, adding more sun too, but we're also putting cover on the ground oh, yeah. from the tops of the trees that we cut. Stump sprouting. There are oh, some yeah. cherries behind Eric that we would cut when we're releasing this tree will be stump sprouts, mineral stumps for white-tailed deer. So it's an endless number of benefits that happen from just helping one oak species. Mm. We're helping many different plant species and as a result, many different wildlife species in the process. Now, our next topic we're going to be discussing is invasives. Now, there's a lot of things um, that keeps Cody up at night when it comes to invasives. And it's not Japanese stiltgrass, not multiflora rose, autumn olive, bush honeysuckle. Oh no, <laughs> it's the tree that keeps them up at night the most. The one, then the only tree of heaven. <laughs> Alanthus tree. Also, as Eric mentioned, inappropriately named the tree of heaven. It is not a tree of heaven, it is a tree of hell. But <laughs> <laughs> invasive species control, we can get a lot done during the winter with our chainsaw, with a bottle of herbicide when it comes to managing non-native invasives. And I know on my property, Eric's spot on. Before I bought it, I, it's almost like somebody planted Alanthus trees, which is what we're standing beside here. But this time of year with a chainsaw and herbicide, as I mentioned, we can really get ahead of invasive species because we can identify the non-natives this time of year. And if you're unsure about the non-natives on your property, contact a local biologist, private lands biologist or a forester and have them walk your property with you so that you can learn which property, which species are non-native and which are invasive because in Alanthus, this time of year looks similar to a poplar tree. During the summer, the leaf structure looks similar to a walnut. So first step is to identify the species on your property, which are native, which are non-native, and which are invasive. But this time of year, I love it. I take great joy and satisfaction in killing non-native invasive species. And with a tree of this size, I would honestly, I would cut it, flush cut it, cut it all the way down and treat the stump with herbicide. It's called a stump treat application with herbicide you're just treating the outer couple inches of the stump with herbicide you don't have to treat the entire stump just the outer ring the cambium layer and that tree is dead doesn't know it yet i do it with lanthus autumn olive bush honeysuckle as well bigger trees or trees that i don't want to fall in a certain direction or i don't feel safe cutting whatever the case may be that just a tree that i don't want to cut down i'll double girdle it and also treat it with herbicide again Speak with a forester or a biologist, they can point you in the right direction for which herbicides to use at which rates and at which time of years. It varies across the country, but this process and this application applies wherever non-native invasive species are present from the deep south all the way up north with a chainsaw and a bottle of herbicide this time of year. You can kill non-native invasive species, which is always gonna be one of our goals when it comes to wildlife management. It's cool because this time of year, while plants are dormant, and we kill this tree, all the natives around it are going to respond immediately this following spring, this growing season, in a couple of months because we kill this tree. And the process of TSI is the same no matter our methodology. We're allowing more sunlight, more resources for the plants that we want to exist and thrive 
on our property, and in this case, it's not non-native invasives, and it's our native vegetation. Now, we define habitat as food, cover, water, and space. The last one I mentioned, space, is usually the one that kind of gets left out of the equation. Now, we do want space in our woodland environments, which we're standing in, but not large scale like what is behind me. Now, if you're standing on your property, and you can kind of see through, for, especially this time of year, you know, hundreds of yards or even 100 yards, it kind of what we refer to as a biological desert, you know? So again, you don't want to go out on your property and chainsaw and cut everything down. That's not what we want to do. Again, diversify using the word habitat. Now, one thing that you can do is create, if you don't have a, enough to have a logging company come in and do some cutting and strategically placing of that, you can do it yourself with chainsaws, as we've been mentioning throughout this video. Now you can go out there with some friends or you know, uh, or what have you and go out there with a goal. You know, lay it out on a piece, uh, on a map and try to figure out to create these things called wildlife openings. Just miniature type of clear cuts, if you will. And if you strategically place this, it'll help your hunting, okay? But just talking wildlife management aspect of it, you know, these things just create so much life. It create diversity. All the things that you're trying to create on your property. Now, what we would do in this environment, again, we don't necessarily gonna cut the oak trees, the more desirable trees, because you don't have to. We're just cutting the non-desirable trees. Now, behind me, if I told you, hey, we're gonna create, I want you to create a 50 yard circumference of a, you know, a wildlife opening, which again, we're gonna be cutting everything down, let the sunlight hit the floor. You know, there's a lot of trees that we're gonna be cutting. No, you want to just look up what trees are limiting the sunlight hitting the forest floor. So instead of like 40 trees, you might only be cutting 10, okay? So you're just looking up, seeing what trees are stealing the sunlight hitting the forest floors. And again, you're trying to cut the more non-desirable trees. Now, if you're all in oaks, you're gonna to have to cut some oaks down, but more or less you're just creating you know, again, a miniature clear cut. You're just looking for food value. Um, you're also looking for pounds per acre. And the benefit for wildlife, not just our game species, as Cody and I always talk about, which is very beneficial, but just the non-game community as well. But reference the game community, this time of year, especially in the northern climates, doing cuts this time of year, very beneficial, especially in a non-baiting type state. We cut these trees, these softwoods, maples, aspen, cottonwoods, whatever, poplar. You're letting all the food, where's the food? It's all up on top. You cutting these trees down, very beneficial for the white-tailed deer, grouse, etc. So you are, again, when it comes to chainsaw management, whether it's invasives, whether it's crop tree release, we can't look at it as, okay, yeah, this is the goal for the future, but the results of it now is incredible. You know, just cutting the tree down, yes, it's for down the road, but the benefits for wildlife happens as soon as you cut it. It's absolutely amazing. When you start out in this journey of wildlife management, you think you're just accomplishing X, Y, and Z. Yeah. You know, the game species that we're all after. But once you start educating uh, yourself on the benefits of what a chainsaw can accomplish, Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, it is absolutely incredible when you allow yourself to be open-minded. And I tell you what, I've always said, the problem is, is we're one species oriented. When you allow yourself to learn about X, a different species mm -hmm. of wildlife, and you concentrate on that, more than likely, especially when it comes to woodland environment, you can accomplish more and better things for the white-tailed deer that you're trying to accomplish because it's micromanaging. Yeah, no, it's really cool. I mean, it's if I'm honest with myself, a lot of the decisions that I make are influenced by two species, mm -hmm. white-tailed deer and rough grouse. But as you mentioned, like once we start to peel back the layers and with the chainsaw, like I said, you wouldn't really think about a chainsaw during the winter and how it can create habitat for pollinators, caterpillars or butterflies or migrating songbirds, but you're doing exactly that with a crop tree release. You're doing exactly that with a wildlife opening, a miniature clear cut, all those wildflowers and yeah. other herbaceous plants that are going to flower throughout the spring and summer. Your goal may be to create habitat for the white-tailed deer, create a situation that you can hunt deer successfully, but in the process you're benefiting deer, turkeys, grouse, songbirds, butterflies, bees, caterpillars, the, the gamut. I mean, it just, it's so yeah, cool and it's amazing. so exciting. It yeah. really is. Yeah. 
But yeah, it's just, again, going out there, educating yourself, reference to how to even run a chainsaw correctly. There are so many courses out there. Contact your state division of forestry. I mean, my son, I've done it. My son has done it. And, you know, now he thinks he's Paul Bunyan's out there cutting, got the 30 inch bar, you know? Yeah. Anyway, but no, there's so many classes out there. Put your man card aside or ego that you yeah. can run safety first, get the right equipment, and go out there and just have a plan. Cody mentioned it earlier in the video. Go out there and have a plan. Just don't go willy-nilly. I watched the YouTube video, now I'm an expert. Yeah. Don't do that. Think it through, take your time, and enjoy yourself. You will see benefits when it comes to wildlife. Masio Properties, where outdoorsmen find their favorite place.